I'm Alyssa Thurvino, your neighborhood news reporter in Alice. School officials with the Alice Independent School District unveiled a reading nook inside the Alice High School. It's a small corner of the library with a big tribute to Marine Perez. Perez spent more than 40 years teaching the importance of reading. Perez, an English teacher with Alice ISD, started his career in 1978. He died in 2021 from complications during heart surgery. Because this was during COVID restrictions, he wasn't given a proper farewell. But on Thursday, that all changed. The school district created a nook in honor of him. His sister, Rosa, was touched by the special tribute. It feels wonderful just to hear everybody speak about him, all the things he did. He did so much for so many people, and, and I'm very proud of him. Many people who spoke at the ceremony tell me Marin had a heart of gold, even beyond the classroom. The nook displays Marin's photo, a plaque, a special quote of his, and even books he taught. School leaders tell me they want Marin Perez's legacy to continue. By having the nook named in his honor, it'll help students for years to come. I'm Melissa Trevino, your neighborhood news reporter in Alice for Chris 6 News. I'm Alexis Scott, your neighborhood news reporter in Metro Corpus Christi, where one young hero saved a family from a house fire, but his heroic efforts aren't stopping there. Jordan Gutierrez said he was in his front yard when he saw smoke coming from his neighbor's house, eventually catching fire. It all happened Wednesday morning on Pecan Street near Castoris Road. Jordan says he immediately ran inside his home and called 911. Within moments, fire crews arrived and put the fire out in 15 minutes. Jordan is now being called a neighborhood hero for springing into action for the family. I just feel like I need to do the right thing because I feel bad for them. Um, they, the little five-year-old started crying, everybody started coughing in there. So I was feeling like I should do the right thing, just give them food, drinks, and cash. Jordan wants to raise at least $100 for the family. He'll be selling popcorn and snow cones all week until he meets his goal. In Corpus Christi, I'm your neighborhood news reporter, Alexis Scott, Chris 6 News. Hey, good evening, folks. I'm senior meteorologist Bill Alexander. This is a look at Doppler radar, and you have to look way on out into Mexico to see any rain of consequence, but it's not going to go anywhere. This is false echo across here, and so it's a pretty quiet evening. Too bad, because we need the rain. Look at the latest lake levels as of today. Choke Canyon down to 22% of capacity combined at 26%. That's pathetic, and we need some rain. Uh, even the drought monitor is getting worse. So we're in a moderate drought over a large portion of our region now. That's an expanding area. We're now five inches below normal in rainfall. What are we looking at for rain? Well, we're going to have to go into next week to see, any, see anything of consequence. I'll give you the details on that in your full forecast. If it's Thursday, that means it's time for the Kitchen Cops. See what inspectors had to say about some of your favorite places. That's coming up next. Texas A&M University Corpus Christi nursing students spent 10 days in a jungle in South America. I'm Esmeralda Zamora, your neighborhood news reporter on the island university, and I'll tell you what memories and new skills these students brought back with them. your neighborhood news reporter on the island university a group of islander nursing students spent 10 days in a jungle in costa rica to complete their clinical rotation portion of the semester the goal was to provide 10 families with medical screenings twice as many as the group that participated last year in the jungle of Costa Rica, a group of Islander nursing students had the adventure of a lifetime, providing medical checkups to indigenous families while learning to adapt to the environment. Their eyes were open to using things like diet, uh, herbs, uh, other kinds of nutrition to help with 
common problems because that is what those folks do because they don't have access to all the medications and the uh, providers that we have here in the States. So it's very different over there. It was beautiful. I spoke with student Rita Castillo before and after the 10 day trip. I feel like I'll have more empathy when I come back for when I'm dealing with the families in the hospital systems or like even at clinics. Um. Rita says what struck her most after returning was the way the families lived from day to day. They're able to manage their health in different ways over there versus us over here, yet they were meeting the same, if not better possibly, the goal medically. Student Maria Delgado says the trip brought tears to her eyes and seeing the families they work with reminded her of how her own family lived in Mexico. Definitely shows you how to treat people differently and be more nice to them because you never really know what they're going through at home. Uh, have more patience for them because sometimes they'll have a smile on their face and say, oh yes, like everything's going fine at home. Like I have um, I have access to everything that I need, but in reality, they don't because that's normal for them. The Texas A&M system has a campus in Costa Rica called the Solstice Center. Equipped with casitas, dining halls, laboratories, and classrooms, this campus housed these students and gave them a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Each year, these nursing students are given the chance to participate. I'm Esmeralda Zamora reporting from the Island University for Chris 6 News. Now, your Chris 6 Kitchen Cops Report. Who's keeping it clean and who needs to clean it up? Let's find out on this week's Kitchen Cops Report. These are scores from City County Health Inspections for the week of May 27th through the 31st. So, what were you doing when you were 22? Did you own your own business? Yes, Victoria Alvarado is and does. She's the owner of Royal Crabs at 6410 Weber. Yeah, you're 22, 22 and years own old. your own business. Yes, sir. Royal Crabs is a seafood restaurant open since September of 22, and this is their third perfect score. Is it more overwhelming than you anticipated owning your own business? It is, especially as a young female, it's been hard. It's been a journey for sure, and I've learned, but I'm very blessed and grateful when I have God on my side. Congratulations and continued success to Victoria Alvarado and Royal Crabs. It's a very short list this week, but it's all perfect scores, including Royal Crabs. We have the Chick-fil-A on South Staples, Dulces on Leopard, Jersey Mike's on Ennis Joslin, Morgan Street Seafood Company on 44th Street, the Stinger's Coffee on South Staples, the Subway on South Alameda, Taqueria Jalisco on SPID, and the Whataburger on Weber. Thanks to all for keeping it clean and safe. Stay with us because senior meteorologist Bill Alexander is up next with a full look at the forecast. Now, your Chris 6 weather forecast. Hey, good evening, folks. I'm sorry. It was a little joke. Uh, I'm a certified meteorologist, and people sometimes always, before I was that, they said I was certifiable anyway. Anyway, let's move along. Uh, got some thunderstorms in Mexico spreading a little bit of high-level clouds across the region here. But there's no precipitation even close by. That's the way it's been for a while now. 97 degrees your high and only a degree off the record of 98. 81 your low this morning. And yeah, uh, not much rain coming. Take a look at this. Our best shot is going to be Monday night, and let's hope that one bears out. We've got a nice upper level disturbance, hopefully moving in to give us some meaningful rain. But we'll talk about that in a second. Temperature is hovering generally in the 80s and 90s. A couple of exceptions, 70s from central Texas into southeast Texas and over in the Marfa area. But around here, everything is uniformly in the 80s right now, so it's a quiet and very warm evening but it's not as humid as it has been. Dew points hovering in the 70s, which is different from the 80, 82, 83 degree range we've been enduring for the last several days. The good news, it's getting drier. You can see that in the afternoon tomorrow with dew points drying out into the 60s over in our western areas. And you see that happen again Saturday as the dry air infiltrates the region. It doesn't reduce the temperature, but it will reduce the heat index. So uh, you can say it's a dry heat type of thing. Overnight tonight, mid 70s to lower 80s. Still a little bit of haze out there, still relatively warm, but not terribly humid, not bad at all. Tomorrow, 
the heat comes back, but the heat index will not be as high. We're looking at upper 80s to upper 90s, but watch what happens with the winds. They get fairly light overnight tonight, and you see the same thing happen again tomorrow night in the afternoon hours, that southeast wind, 10 to 20 miles an hour, replenishes some of the humidity, but not all of it. And what we end up with is a little bit of fog in the early morning hours. You see that right there tomorrow morning. It's patchy, yeah. And you see a little bit less of that Saturday morning. But uh, for the overall thing, which is basically mostly sunny during the daylight hours, but not quite as humid. Look at the dew points. Uh, the result of the dew points and the temperatures being a little bit further apart. Now you've got heat index values instead of 116 to 120 we saw today, only 100 to 105 tomorrow. A bit more comfortable. Now, to, um, as you get into Saturday, it's a bit more. Uh, moisture comes back, but it's still below heat index, uh, heat advisory criteria. So that's good news. A little bit more tolerable in the outdoor areas and it has been. Now, uh, tomorrow, sunny skies in the coastal waters, 87 degrees, water temperature matching that. Winds are going to be fairly light, east and southeast, 5 to 10 knots. That's going to make for smooth bays, two-foot seas, and what we're going to see is a low rip current risk, and we're not looking at much in the way of rainfall coming up. So here's your forecast, the way we're going to go down with this, an upper level disturbance is going to move in uh, Monday night at, right in this area and give us at least isolated storms, maybe a quarter to a half an inch of rain in our southern areas. Other than that, fairly dry, a little less humid over the weekend, highs in the lower to middle 90s, lows upper 70s to lower 80s.